In this screencast, I'm going to discuss differentials, and I'm going to do that by working through two example problems of the type you might encounter. The first is geometrical, and you're asked to consider the volume V of a cylinder of radius R and height H, and to write the expression for the differential of volume dV in terms of the differentials dr and dh. So here's the situation. We have here a cylinder of radius r and height h. We imagine making infinitesimal changes to the radius dr or to the height dh. And we want to know in the limit of infinitesimal changes dr and dh, what is the change in volume. To do this, of course, you need to know what the formula for volume is. Pi r squared, the area of the base, times the height. And then it's a simple calculation. The differential of volume is dv dr dr plus dv dh dh, which can easily be evaluated. Okay, so that very simply is the answer. I want to just discuss though the interpretation. You can see, in this case, we can see very easily what the various terms mean. For example, this term here represents the change in volume just due to the change in height. So let me take that off of there. And we can see that, I have an illustration here. If we just increase the height of the cylinder by an infinitesimal amount, dh, that's meant to be infinitesimal. Then we add a little bit of volume, the base area, pi r squared, times the increment in height, dh. Then we have the contribution to due to a change of radius. I can also illustrate that. So we've incremented the radius at a fixed height increase the radius slightly at a fixed height there. And so we've added a, a cylindrical shell, as it's called. The volume of this cylindrical shell is the surface area of the original cylinder, which is 2 pi r. That's the circumference, that's the circumference of the base cylinder, times the height h, times the height h, is the area of the cylinder. And if we multiply it by this increment dr, this length right here, that'll give us the volume of this cylindrical shell. And just let me just emphasize that for differentials, we've made it this infinitesimal increase in, in radius, which means that the implication is that the radius itself has not changed from the, inner, from the inner cylinder to this slightly increased outer cylinder. So this R here is a constant. All right, anyway, so we get the, the change in volume due to each of these factors. One of the things one can see in differential expressions such as this is that the the differential change in volume due to changes in radius and changes in height are not the same. And one can easily see this in this cylinder that's sketched here. For, a, for given differentials in radius and height, you can just visually see that I've gained more volume of the cylinder by making a change in radius here than a change in height. Therefore, from this expression, one can answer questions such as this. I have one here. For what values of the ratio r over h do infinitesimal increases in height increase the volume more than infinitesimal increases in the radius r? In other words, when is the contribution from the height larger than the contribution from the radius? This is rather easy to work out in this case. We simply want pi r squared to be greater than 2 pi r h, which gives us r over h larger than 2. Or in other words, the radius is larger than twice the height. If you think about it, that means a uh, very flat cylinder. I can illustrate that here. A cylinder with or with a radius larger than twice the height would be a cylinder such as this one. That's probably about right. Only when a cylinder has a radius more than twice the height do small increments in height produce more volume change than small increments in, in the radius. All right, so that's the kind of thing you can address easily with, with differentials. So let me go on to another question. For the second example problem, I've chosen an example that is very typical of the kind of question one would actually use differentials for. We don't have to worry too much about the physics, but just to tell you it's taken from thermodynamics and there's something called the ideal gas law, which gives a relationship for an ideal gas between the pressure and volume of a gas and the amount of the gas, in, measured in moles, a constant called the gas constant, and the temperature of the gas. So we imagine over here a gas, and it's at some temperature T, and there's some amount of it in there, some amount of the gas, and what else? 
and there's a certain volume for the container. The container has a certain volume. And there's a certain force per area, unit area that you have to apply to keep the lid on, and that's the pressure. So there's a relationship between these. And the kind of the kind of question might, one might be asked is to understand the relationship between changes in pressure and say volume and temperature in differential forms. So more precisely, one might be asked, let's see if I can do this, to write the differential of pressure in terms of the differentials for volume and temperature. All right, so again, a rather easy question. To start, we, we will have to solve for pressure strictly in terms of these other variables, easy, and then just differentiate. dp is, well, let me write it out, dp dv dv plus dp dt dt. So that gives us, in this case, you aren't asked to do anything else with this, but let's just, um, let's see if it makes sense. What's interesting about this, well, let's just do this, the, the case of dt first. All right, you would have to know that uh, the number of moles is, is positive, R is positive, and the volume is positive. And then we see that increases in temperature will increase the pressure P. All right, and that's, that is to say, if you, if you, if you took this, this gas and heated it up, I think intuitively you can understand that the gas in there would be, be bouncing around more, and that would put more force on the lid and therefore increase the pressure. So increasing the temperature increases the pressure, and the amount of which it increases is given by, is it's say inversely proportional to the volume. That's something you learn from this. The case of volume changes is a little more interesting because, well, because of the minus sign in particular. This is the first time we've seen this. And it goes as one over V squared. So we see that increases in, in volume will actually decrease the pressure. So let me just um, see if I can illustrate that real fast here. So that if you, if you, were to increase the volume, say, let's see if I can do this real fast. Let's just say if you were to push this lid up a little bit, so as to, let me get that off of there, so as to uh, make the volume a little bit bigger, what you'd find it would happen is that the pressure would actually go down a little bit. Okay, it would go down by exactly this much. For a differential change and in, increase in volume, the pressure would actually decrease uh, given by this term. So that illustrates how using partial, partial derivatives, you can, you can calculate differential expressions, and then depending on the circumstance, the interpretation might be of use. And I believe that's all I have to say about differentials.